hey, guess what? I got some astronomical nacho cheese for you. You decide if it's real cheese or if it's fake cheese. With that being said, let's go. Astronomers have just discovered a new dwarf planet. Again? Didn't we just do that like two days ago and then five days before that and seven days before that and 12 days before that and 13 days before that and 17 days before that? Seems to be like a trend. If I were all into pattern recognition, I'd be going ding, 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 ding. Or whatever. I don't know if you know this. Thor news is for winners. And that's why you're here. So stick around. We've got a video message. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Party Dance Time. Welcome to the solar system. Well, thanks, Peter Dockrell. And he wrote this today, July 12, 2016. Man, 2016's been a doozy, huh? Yeah, it has. All right. An international team of astronomers has announced the discovery of a new dwarf planet in our solar system, finding a distant object beyond Neptune that circles the sun in a spectacularly wide orbit. Man, she's so wide in all the right places. And when I say she, I mean the orbit, of course. Dubbed 2015 Rest and Relaxation 245 by the International Astronomical Union while they come up with a better name. Asterisk, they don't always come up with a better name. The dwarf planet is about 700 kilometers in diameter. Can I see a photograph? And its elongated orbit sends it out some 120 times further from the sun than the Earth. Or we call that 120 astronomical units. So it's a pretty distant neighbor. That ain't gonna stop me from saying, hey baby, can I get a cup of sugar? Astronomers are finding more of these dwarf planets in the Kuiper Belt all the time. Wait a second. That gets me to ask. Definitions are sticky, tricky, and sometimes icky. But why are they calling some of these a dwarf planet and some are just asteroids? We know what you got to do to be a comet. You got to be on fire and headed towards the sun. Uh, but I don't get how they're defining a dwarf planet versus an asteroid. Do you? Go ahead and leave your knowledge for me in the comment section if you can. All right. Feeling a bit spicy, so let's go. In fact, the scientist who found it as part of the Outer Solar System's Origins Survey. Oh, yeah, this thing again. The S-O-S-O-S-O -S -O -S -O, or O-S-S-O-S. -S -O -S. Say it's the largest O-S-S-O-S -S -O -S discovery to date. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Of the more than 500 trans-Neptunian objects, TNOs, identified by the survey, this one is the biggest. Okay. I guess Eris doesn't fall in that category. Can I see photo from this wonderful survey? The icy worlds beyond Neptune trace how the giant planets formed and then moved out from our sun. Wait, are you saying that they moved, they formed around the sun like dingleberries and then just gravitated outward? I don't know about that. Then I, I'm not a big question disc theory believer anyway. You feel me? Sometimes planets move inward. Let us piece together the history of the solar system. Yeah, it sounds like a great idea, researcher Michelle Bannister. But almost all these icy worlds are painfully small and faint. That's what she said. No, seriously, she did right then. It's really exciting to find one that's large and bright enough we can study it in detail. Hey, I'm large and I'm super bright. So I was being cocky. The last thing I need is more people studying me. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Holy crap, this article's long. RR245's huge orbit which you can see in the image above, takes it about 700 years to circle the sun. And researchers say it's currently traveling in, currently traveling in, currently traveling in, for its closest approach, which we'll see it get within 5 billion kilometers of the sun sometime around 2096. Man, right now I feel the urge to have a really giant telescope that I could sit out in the back and, uh, Maybe a couple beers. I put the telescope in Colorado. Maybe smoke too. And just kind of look in that direction, region where all these TNOs, dwarf planets, are coming in to the sun. You know? I don't know. Sounds like an interesting thing to do to me. But I'm a, I'm a dork nerd and a geek. So I must not tangent on too much. The closest approach, which we'll see it get within 500 billion kilometers of the sun, somewhere around 2096. Okay, how many AUs is that? Don't make me math calculator it. I'm in the middle of making a video here, can't you see? That's after spending hundreds of years at more than 12 billion kilometers from the sun. All right, see, now you got me doing math. I don't like math. Okay, so if it's 120, oh, geez. So it's like a sixth. I think there was a fraction in there, division. Huh. I mean, it's coming to about 20 AU. 
No, not close enough to hit Earth. Yes, close enough to push a bunch of asteroids and comets and stuff in. Maybe it's not that big. And they say space is giant. That's after spending hundreds of years at more than 12 billion kilometers from the sun. Although the team acknowledges there's still a lot to be confirmed about R245's precise movements, as we've only been able to observe just a tiny fraction of its epic loop so far. Scientists think there were once many more of these dwarf planets in our solar system, but most were destroyed or ejected when larger planets in our solar system moved to their current position and ate them all like Pac-Man eating dots, bro. Asterisk. That is not Bill Nye confirmed. But now, Running Roosters 245 enjoys the ranks of other survivors from this period, such as Sirius, Pluto, Haume, Megmeg, Eris. Wait, are you saying it's bigger than Eris? Wait, are you saying it's bigger than Eris? Shocking. Which have all been recognized as dwarf planets by the IAU amidst the tens of thousands of much smaller objects beyond Neptune. The researchers first spotted the dwarf planet in February when Astronomer J.J. Cavaliers from the National Research Council of Canada was sifting through the OSSOS data recorded in September 2015. Well, good job, J.J. There it was on the screen, said Bannister. This dot of light moving so slowly that it had to be at least twice as far as Neptune from the sun. Why can't it just be going really slow, man? I know people go really slow. I know people go real slow. They'd be like, can't you hurry up? And they'd be like, no, it's as fast as I can go. So them that's fast, to me it's slow. And that right there is relativity. The team suggests that it's possible that RR245 may be one of the last large worlds detected beyond Neptune. Okay, great. You're finding these all the time and this one's bigger than anyone you've ever found, but it's the last big one. Wasn't that Eris? Eris was supposed to be the last big one. Before that, it was like Pluto was the last big one. So why don't you quote them on this possible suggesting? As the brightest dwarf planets have already been mapped, Asterisk, you're saying a bunch of dumb stuff. Did you have to, like, get a degree or pass a test to write this stuff, man? Although the debut of the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope next decade could turn up new discoveries we haven't been able to detect so far. Oh, really? Yeah, you think? OSSOS was designed to map the orbital structure of the outer solar system to decipher its history, said one of the researchers, Brett Gladman, of the University of British Columbia in Canada. While not designed to efficiently detect dwarf planets, we're delighted to have found one on such an interesting orbit. But beyond helping us map the outer reaches of our solar system to discover these dwarf planets and their unique geological composition helps us understand more about the cosmic past in our corner of the galaxy. They're the closest thing to a time capsule that transports us to the birth of the solar system. Astrophysicist Pedro Lacerda, Lacerda from the Queen's University Belfast in Northern Ireland, who wasn't involved with the discovery, told Ian Sample at The Guardian. Wait, are you... An article quoting another article quoting a guy who didn't work on it? That's interesting. You got a crazy process, man. You can make an analogy with fossils, which tells us about creatures long gone. I just gotta say, I don't like that sentence at all. <laughs> you can make an analogy with almost anything, man, you know? Uh, and the creatures aren't gone because it's a planet. It's just as alive as any other planet, right? So it's not dead, it's just really far away. So your analogy is terrible. You know, it's so like making an analogy of... Uh, Florida to like California. That's what it is. It's like Earth is California and this thing is Florida. It's really far away if you're walking or floating at non light speeds. You know what I'm saying? Dude, like it's not long gone. It's just far out there. Geez, scientists sometimes are so horrible with words and they're really important in communication and stuff. Discovery hasn't been published yet, so we're still waiting for the further details from the researchers for now. But RR245 has been formally noted by the International Astronomical Union. Sweet. Do, hey, do any dudes from the IAU watch Thor News? Because, you know, I, I cover astronomy. Uh, try to do it with integrity and humor and putting out uh, the research and news that I've been given and then letting the people decide. Sure, I throw my opinion in there, but that's just my opinion. I'm not asking anybody to believe it. And then no matter what, I was getting like five or six guys who were like, you're a Freemason, you love NASA, you're a NASA employee, you're just trying to steal people to lie. It's like, hey, I guess you guys don't watch my videos because uh, I don't trust nobody. And I'm just giving you the information that's out there. A lot of times I'm saying like, I don't trust nobody. So, you know, but this whole Planet X, Planet 9, all these new trans Neptunian objects, we'll, we can't see with our backyard telescopes. It's very interesting. To this point, I don't, still don't know if it's fake cheese or real cheese. And that is where we'll end it. Until next time, I will be cool. You will be cool. We'll all be cool. Stay cool. Hey, baby, can I get a cup of sugar? Mm -hmm.